Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's me, Sean the Deep Sea Man, and today we're going to do uh, something different, something about these Ethane ships, these VLEG ships. The same thing would be on an Ethylene ship as well. So, this is what we're talking about the cargo vaporizer. I'm sure most of you have heard about it. I'm sure many of you are not even very familiar with the function or with the cross section of this particular device. It's a simple heat exchanger. It transfers heat from one medium to the other. Seawater is the only medium used on vaporizer for LPG ships and ethylene ships. There's something different. Ethane ships, yes, there's something different. What is the vaporizer? What is an ethane vaporizer? It is basically a heat exchanger with a twist. And this time, a third medium is there or an intermediate medium or a secondary medium for heat transfer and that's propylene. So this is what an ethane vaporizer looks from the outside that you can see right here. And well, if you want to see it, let's tear it apart and see the inside. And now back to the ethane vaporizer. It's basically a shell and tube heat exchanger. The lower half has tubes for seawater to flow. The shell is half filled with propylene liquid. And the top half of this uh, vaporizer has tubes for ethane or ethylene to flow. Again, three mediums, remember, seawater, propylene and ethane or ethylene. And now to the functioning. What makes this ethylene boil? Or as my other videos, what makes this or even the propylene go blue, 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 blue. Now, as seawater flows through the tubes, seawater heats up the propylene and propylene vapors are generated. Once the propylene vapors are generated, they rise upward. These propylene vapors come in contact with the ethylene. This minus 88 degree ethane or in the case of ethylene minus 104 liquid enters and is warmed up by the propylene, the propylene vapors that are there. And in turn, these propylene vapors condense and drip back or fall back into the liquid, which is at the bottom, which acts like a sump. So this cycle is thus completed for propylene. Propylene changes phases from liquid to vapor, that's gas, and again gets condensed back to liquid. And now again, the simple question arises, why doesn't the seawater freeze? The seawater flow rate is maintained, the velocity of seawater is maintained at a very high rate, enabling the seawater to flow freely and not to freeze inside. So do not throttle the seawater outlet valve of this vaporizer at all. Another precaution, do not operate the vaporizer below five degree of seawater temperature most important uh, precaution. Some of you may even think, why is propylene there? Why don't we have just ethane and that's it? And if seawater uh, comes in contact with minus 88 or minus 104 degree liquid, it will freeze uh, pretty much instantly. So hence the propylene. Anyway, stay tuned for the next one. The next one, we'll be doing a few more things on how to top up propylene. It's not that simple. How to commission a new vaporizer. Uh, if you see the level low, if you see you know, sufficient propylene hasn't been topped up or for some reason you have a leak, you've arrested the leak and now you need to top up the propylene. Let's do that in the next video. And also we'll see how to store the vaporizer if you're not using it for a long time or you're on long voyage. So let's do this in the next video. Stay tuned. There's another medium coming in and that's nitrogen. I hope you know why and where is that going to be used. Take care. Bye-bye and stay safe.